At the beginning of everything, even before the creation of the world, there was a figure in heaven known for his beauty and light. His name was Lucifer, an angel admired by all, and who played a very important role among the creatures of heaven. He shone like a star and had great wisdom, but there came a time when a drastic change took place. This much-loved and revered angel fell from heaven, and this fall was not just a physical decision, but a transformation of his being. From a position of honor, he went to a completely different reality, marked by separation from the place he once called home. And much worse than that, he was completely cut off from the glory of God. The story of Lucifer's fall from heaven, along with the third of the angels and his transformation into Satan, is mentioned in biblical passages from the books of Isaiah, Ezekiel, and even Revelation. In this video, I'm going to show you the three reasons why this archangel of God became the king of darkness and the prince of this world. What's more, I'm going to help you identify if you're being influenced by the enemy in the same areas that caused Lucifer to fall, so that you don't turn away from God as he did. Okay, but before I start, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Just click on the subscribe button right below the video and also activate the Tinkerbell notification so that you can receive the next videos I post directly on your mobile phone, okay? And now we come to the reasons why Lucifer fell from the sky. The first reason is pride. This angel wanted the whole world to revolve around him. He wanted all heavenly beings to bow at his feet and worship him. And it wasn't enough for him to have an important position in God's kingdom because he wanted to be God himself. Look at what the Lord revealed to the prophet Isaiah about this. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. How you were thrown to earth, you who overthrew the nations. You who said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will set my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the Mount of Assembly, on the highest point of the Holy Mount. I will ascend higher than the highest clouds. I will be like the Most High. But to the depths of Sheol you will be taken. You will go to the bottom of the abyss. Look at that. Did you notice that in this little speech, Satan used the pronoun I repeatedly. I will ascend. I will raise. I will settle. I will ascend. And finally, he said, I will be. This shows us how proud his heart was and how much he craved recognition. So he went to great lengths to convince the other angels to stand by his side. Unfortunately, nowadays, Satan has influenced many people to behave in the same way. And do you know which ideology has spread the most in the 21st century? The famous phrase, believe in yourself. Just listen to the speeches of influencers, coaches, and even some leaders out there, as if we were capable of doing something for ourselves without depending on God's grace and mercy. Of course, each of us has our potential, but we must remember that the devil is cunning. He is very intelligent. Realize that at no time did Lucifer want to elevate himself above God. He wanted to be equal to God, comparing himself to him, being on the same level of power and majesty. And that's exactly what Lucifer has done to human beings ever since he was cast out of heaven. If we look at chapter 3 of the book of Genesis, we see that the serpent convinced Eve to eat the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge, saying that she and her husband would be equal to the Creator. Thousands of years have passed, and the strategy of stirring up people's pride remains the same. I'll give you a simple but very clear example of this. Why do most people want to have thousands, millions of followers on their social networks? Because people promote themselves so much, often exposing their bodies, their intimacies and even their pain and struggles to be exalted, admired, adored and even worshipped. But let's be clear here that we can't generalize Many men and women use social media to help their neighbors do good and post relevant things. And just as in my case and that of other men and women of God, many have also taken the word of the Lord to various people around the world. 
But what I want to say here is that the majority, unfortunately, end up wanting to promote themselves to build their kingdom. And when we say the Lord's Prayer, we are saying to God, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Isn't that right? But these people influenced by pride pray out of their mouths because their hearts desire exactly the opposite. And if this seems so obvious to realize, why do people continue in this error? It's because of ego, brothers and sisters. Our sinful nature causes us to have an inflated view of ourselves, to think that we are special, superior, and therefore deserve to be treated differently. But this is a big lie, and the Bible itself proves it. In Isaiah 41 verse 14, God calls the people of Israel, Jacob's little worm. What God wanted to show was that no matter how much Israel was the chosen nation, they could never equal it. They were like a little worm in the face of the Lord's power and greatness. The second reason is vanity. The second reason Lucifer was cast out of heaven is because he was obsessed with his own beauty. The Bible says that his heart was exalted because of his appearance and wisdom. And what you need to know about him is that God created him as the most beautiful of all beings. He was the most glorious. But the problem was that this beauty went to Lucifer's head. He wanted the other angels to admire his image and say, what a glorious creature, how perfect you are. And this attachment to the image is another trap that Satan uses today to make people lose intimacy with God, just as he did. And if we go back to Genesis chapter 3, we'll see that the serpent got Eve to pay attention to how beautiful that fruit was. It didn't matter if that fruit had been forbidden by God, it was pleasing to the eye and could therefore be eaten. Eve, seduced by what her eyes saw, ended up sinning. Just as in the case of pride, Satan also continues to use this weapon to deceive millions of people around the world. He presents beautiful things before their eyes so that they fall prey to their own lusts. Do you want another biblical example of this? David. When he saw Bathsheba bathing, the Bible says that he became so focused on her beauty that he simply ignored God and his position as leader of the nation of Israel. And he lay with that married woman. That woman became pregnant and David ended up sending her husband to lead Israel's army, only to have him die in the war. The king became an adulterer and a murderer simply by fulfilling the desire that was awakened in his eyes. I'm not saying that it's a sin to have a good physical appearance, to be considered a beautiful person in human eyes. The Bible itself says that some men and women of God were very beautiful. What I am saying is that if you look better than many people, be very careful, because that's exactly what the world is looking for. After all, the Bible says that man looks at appearance and the devil knows this. He can make you fall into temptation and also into the sin of idolatry, worshipping your own body. The third reason why Lucifer fell from heaven is the power of persuasion through the desire to equalize with God and take his throne. Lucifer caused a great rebellion in heaven. In Revelation chapter 12, the Apostle John recorded a vision he had of this moment. Look at what it says. There was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and his angels fought back. But they were not strong enough, and so they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was cast out. He is the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who deceives the whole world. He and his angels have been cast down to earth. Notice that even though Lucifer didn't manage to realize his plan to be like God, he did manage to gather a great heavenly army to fight against Michael and his archangels. There's even a verse in Revelation 12 that says that a third of the angels, who in the biblical passage are called stars, chose to side with Satan in this battle and ended up falling along with him. The question that remains is how he managed to be so influential in heaven as to make God's creatures turn against him. As we have seen, Lucifer was an enlightened being. 
In Ezekiel chapter 21, the word says that his clothes were adorned with every precious stone and that he had been chosen and anointed as the guardian cherub, having access to God's holy mount. This alone should have attracted the attention of the other angels. But I believe there is more to it. The Bible also says that the drums and flutes were in Lucifer, and this means that he could have been responsible for and could have been the one singing the songs to exalt and glorify the Lord. So what many scripture scholars wonder is whether this being of light could have used music to conquer and lead the angels in their rebellion. Although the Bible doesn't give us any answers, it is a fact that Satan uses music to influence people on earth today. But the enemy is much more present in the musical universe than we realize. After all, if he was responsible for music in heaven, why wouldn't he be here on earth too? We know that the music industry has grown a lot in recent decades, winning over more and more listeners with its diverse rhythms, and the devil has increasingly taken advantage of this to spread messages that go against our faith. For example, many songs contain lyrics that promote lifestyles and values opposed to Christian principles, such as promiscuity, drug use, and violence. Others encourage bad behavior, such as infidelity, materialism, and revenge. Not only that, there are songs and artists that Satan uses to get people to praise his name. For example, there's a Rolling Stones song called Sympathy for the Devil, and not to mention so many other singers and bands who use satanic symbols and rituals in their concerts. The metal band Slayer, for example, is known for its lyrics that often deal with themes such as death, anti-Christianity and the occult. And this doesn't just happen outside of Brazil. Many singers make it very clear at their concerts and in their music videos that they have a direct relationship with the dark side. What's more, it's not just secular music and singers that suffer from satanic influence. The gospel world has also been a major target of the devil. Only there he acts differently, very disguised. However, this doesn't mean that the evil is any less than in other types of music. And you may be asking yourself now, but pastor, how do I identify a gospel song that may have some kind of evil influence? Well, there are three main situations. The first is the exaltation of the self. Many gospel songs focus more on the exaltation of the individual than on the Lord. These songs emphasize human emotions and personal experiences more than the glory of God. They talk about human problems and place the Lord as a steward who must always be ready to serve us and solve our struggles. The second situation is prosperity theology. Some gospel singers distort God's word promoting the idea that in God we will have all the things we want, that no evil will befall us, and that we will never experience difficulties. The thing is, brothers and sisters, Jesus himself said that we would have afflictions in this world, so these songs are nothing more than an attempt by the enemy to make us believe that if things aren't happening the way we want, it's because our faith isn't enough or because God isn't as good as he seems. And the third situation is the lack of a biblical basis. I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of today's gospel songs sound a lot like romantic or pop culture songs. They have nice lyrics and a pleasant melody, but they say very little or almost nothing about the word of God. This kind of music gives us a false sense that we are entering into the presence of the Lord but it doesn't feed our soul much, less connect our spirit to God's Holy Spirit. To finish, I want to return to the main point of this message, which is the reason why Lucifer was cast out of heaven. He wanted to be equal to God, but that's impossible. And as much as he tried every which way, just as he deceived many of the angels back then, that's why, brothers and sisters, it's very important for us to know God's word and the weapons the enemy uses to try to deceive us. The more we unravel the character of Satan, the more we see that he is the opposite of Christ. Before he wanted a throne in the clouds, but Jesus came into the world in a manger and then on a colt. 
He always wanted to destroy humanity, but Jesus came to give his life to sinners. Satan's proposals always lead to perdition, but Jesus offers eternal life to all who believe in him and repent of their sins. Satan always wanted to be equal to God, but Jesus renounced his glory, became one of us, and took the position of a servant by dying on the cross. And because of his humility, God exalted him above everything and everyone, and today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. May we follow his example. Lucifer was an angel of great stature, admired for his beauty and wisdom. However, his desire to equalize with God reveals a proud and rebellious nature. This aspiration not only led to his downfall, but also symbolizes humanity's eternal temptation, the desire to go beyond our limits and achieve divine status. This is reflected in many human temptations and sins, where pride, the search for power and the desire to be worshipped or venerated are manifested. On the other hand, Jesus Christ represents the paradigm of humility and service. Born in a manger, living a simple life and finally choosing the path of sacrifice over earthly power, Jesus demonstrates a path of love, action and humility. His life and teachings are the antithesis of the values promoted by Satan. Instead of seeking personal exaltation, Jesus teaches the value of service, love of neighbor, and surrender to God. The importance of knowing God's word, as mentioned in the text, lies in being able to discern between these two contrasting natures. While Satan seeks to deceive and divert human beings from God's path, using various strategies such as appealing to ego, vanity, and power, the Bible offers guidance and wisdom to resist these temptations. Satan is often described as a being who promotes disorder, chaos, and destruction. His actions aim to corrupt God's creation and lead people away from the true essence of faith. In contrast, Jesus brings human beings the message of redemption and the possibility of reconciliation with God, even in the midst of their faults and sins. The story of Lucifer and his fall is therefore a powerful reminder to Christians of the dangers of pride and rebellion against God. At the same time, Jesus' life and teachings serve as a guide to a life of humility, love and service to others, values that lie at the heart of the Christian faith. Thus, by understanding these narratives and applying their teachings, believers seek to live a life in line with divine principles, resisting the wiles of Satan and following the example of Jesus Christ. This understanding and practical application of the faith are fundamental to the spiritual journey and the search for salvation in Christianity. We have reached the end of our video, and I hope you like it. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment on the video. Continue watching videos about the history of the Bible. I will leave two recommendations here on the screen. God bless you. We will get to the next video.